let's come back to Parliament. Uh, Joseph Opokogako is standing by. Joe, before we get the updates on the boycott, how has the House been marking the tree planting exercise? So there's been tree planting activities here in Parliament as well. In fact, Parliament is not sitting today at all. All members of Parliament have been granted a leave of assault for them to then travel to their constituencies to go lead tree planting exercises right in their constituencies. But uh, within the presence of Parliament, Speaker um, Alban Bagben as well as First Deputy Speaker Jos Ewusu and Second Deputy Speaker, um, who is also the MP for Formina, have all been planting trees right here within the presence of Parliament, as well as the clerk of Parliament himself, Cyril Ansa, and a number of other key leaders. And it's been a ceremony here at which Speaker Alban Bagwin has been indicating that the planting of the trees should not end the process, but there should be very conscious effort to nurture these trees so that then they can grow into bigger trees that will then eventually benefit the entire environment. Daniel. Mm. Right, right. Uh, that's a very laudable move by the Speaker of Parliament. But let's come back to the boycott. Um, tell us about how the minority MPs of Parliament have not been at Martin E. James Akosa's vetting. So, funny enough, that vetting started just a few minutes after 10 a.m. this morning. None of the minority MPs, in fact, there are 13 NDC MPs on that committee, none of them was present. The vetting then began with um, a lot of the majority MPs then asking the necessary questions. The minority MPs give a number of reasons for which they say they don't want to be part of the vetting process. First of all, they say that Mr. J. Mensakosa used violence to deny them a majority in parliament. Uh, using his uh, seat in the Techiman South area and how he conducted himself ahead of the polls. They also make the point that um, the killings there is something that they would want to protest. There were about two deaths in the Techiman South area during the election and they say they would want to send a message to the international community that the inaction of the police in terms of bringing the alert perpetrators to book is something that is very much out of place. And again, the minority mm. MPs say they would want to send a clear message that um, someone who benefited from violence in coming to Parliament shouldn't be rewarded mm. with even more positions, including a deputy ministerial position, which is how come they boycotted his vetting. And the indication we're getting is that they will take this to even l longer lengths in the sense that when it comes to approval on the floor of Parliament itself, it's very likely that the minority will vote against it. They will demand secret voting and they would seek to actually pull bricks on the process to get him approved. Um, there's been responses to that from those on the majority side. I've been speaking to Obi Amwa, who is Deputy Minister Designate for Local Government himself, as well just as Mr. J. Mensakosa, and he's also a member of the vetting committee. And he makes the point that he thinks the reasons being given by the minority are far-fetched and very much unjustifiable, and that they on the MPP side will use their numbers and seek to get Mr. J. Mensakos approved even when the processes come to the plenary itself. Now, Joseph, um, the process itself of the vetting, I can imagine it wasn't as um, lively as the vetting with the likes of Harun Edrisu, Mohammed Mutaka Mubarak, and Mahama Yaraga present would be. You are right, Daniel. There was a lot of um, uh, questions that usually you would say are the kind of uh, praise singing questions that would come up during the vetting because then, of course, they are all on the same side, speaking of the MPP MPs and Mr. J. Mensakosa. But very fundamentally, a very interesting question that came up at the beginning of the entire vetting from one of the NPP MPs, John Kuma, was what Mr. J. Mensakosa had done about the deaths that happened in his constituency during the election because it's one of the reasons that the minority MPs gave and they had insisted that uh, the defense minister, the interior minister, none of them have actually visited the family of the victims and even those who were shot and didn't pass on because um, they are not exactly sensitive about what happened. And uh, Mr. J. Mensakosa responded to that even at the beginning of the session and said that uh, even one of those who died um, a gentleman called Abdul, his family, as in the mother and the father, are present in the vetting room because he's since gone to 
virtually commiserate with the family and provided the necessary support to help them get back on their feet. And I've actually been interacting with the family of this said gentleman who is one of those who died. And the family make the point that the, the gentleman who was killed is actually a nephew of Mr. J. Mensakosa. And as a family, they managed to resolve matters and they're counting on Mr. J. Mensakosa to then go ahead and seek the necessary justice for them. So they, the family, fully support him being vetted for this particular uh, position. That was kind of the very um, controversial question that came up. And then all the others were very usual questions. And the vetting itself lasted for just a little over 30 minutes. Joseph Opokugaku, thank you very much for those updates.